Welcome. Milk and Nuggets, number 10. Yeah, that's about right. Frank Hot Sauce, of course. I gotta have it. With my fun nuggets, you know, those dinosaur things I've been having. I still have more, and I don't think they're going to be gone anytime soon. So you just have to deal with it. Um, maybe I might spice it up later. Really getting uh, Frank's hot sauce, and sorry, no eye contact. Um, oh, and uh, instead of having that awful chocolate milk I had before, back to Lucerin 2% chocolate milk. Oh, man. So good. Roar. Oh, no, don't eat me. This is the part where you see these lovely things. You can click. Wait. Yeah, you can click on those. You're like, oh my gosh, I skipped ahead. Don't want to listen to it ramble and just go on. I know how terrible that can be. So last night I saw The Watch that Ben Stiller, Vince Vaughn, Skinny Jonah Hill and Richu Ayukado. I, I'm so upset with myself for not knowing how to pronounce this or say his name. The the Moss from IT Crowd, and got horrible reviews. And I don't know what the heck they're thinking because it was a really fun movie. I I think of it as how I saw Forty Year Old Virgin, where it's it. It seemed like it took a while to get going, but once it got going, I was like, yes, please. And it actually reminded me a lot of Hot Fuzz with aliens. Because uh, in Hot Fuzz, they're kind of like kind of like the joke police. They're not like real official. And Neighborhood Watch is always never, you know, taken seriously. And I'm not going to lie, sometimes it seemed like it was trying too hard. That's what a lot of stuff does. What, what can you do about it? You can't do much about it. I enjoyed it. The The lady I went with, she thinks that if you liked Paul, you might be interested in, in this movie. It's good stuff. There was good laughter. Good times were had by me. What else matters? I really don't like how this is sticking out. Okay. So, next topic. Last week I went to the Wii U experience of a friend and it was pretty much just E3 moved like moving from city to city. It's like, "Hey, um we didn't do so good a job impressing everybody with E3. So, we're just going to move to E3 to other people and try to get underground fans talking about like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. So everybody was like, oh, I hear this is awesome. I should do it. And um, I think it worked for me. I, I wasn't really against it in the first place. I was necessarily always for the Wii U. Because I'm a fanboy. Woo! But first I played Project P100. I wasn't impressed. It, it felt kind of like a button mashing Pikmin. Instead of, like, controlling the herd of Pikmin, you are the herd. You're one guy in the herd, and you can't really tell where your guy is, and you just run around and mash buttons, and you do stuff. There is one thing where you go into a building, you go to the screen on the, the gamepad, and it didn't... That, that was the one time when I looked at it, it did not show off the prettiness of the pad. It's not HD pad, so we expect. The next game I played was Single Player Zombie U. And it wasn't calibrated. That's why I gotta say I will find tell you later why. But like it just felt not responsive when turning, kind of shaky, not stable. It just wasn't didn't feel ready to go. Did not feel complete. That's not good for a game. More Franks. And then after that lackluster thing, um, I mean, I didn't care about Batman or Ninja Gaiden, so we played Ninja Gaiden, whatever. Ah, we jumped in Super Mario Brothers. First I played, just, you know, running around with one of the toads, like, oh, okay, this is Mario Brothers. And then I tried playing the gamepad, and I soon realized it became the ultimate troll device, game, whatever. You could play up to six people, four playing that, and two on the gamepads. And I spent the whole time just putting blocks in front of people or pushing enemies into them. I mean, that's all you can do. 
create box and push enemies, but that's all I did. It was hilarious. I think I was pissing them off. There's one part where you fall and try to collect coins. I kept on putting bricks underneath them so they couldn't fall. I was having a blast. Eventually, I was like, okay, I just decided to help one guy fly and get the coins. Boo-hoo. But that was fun. I did enter a tournament for that Donkey Kong racing game where you try to go down the... It's all right. That's, I can't say much. But then, last thing I played was Zombie U multiplayer. Now, it wasn't like Deathmatch free-for-all. There was the one person playing, they actually had the Wii U Pro controller, which is a great class controller pro. That's what it is. It's a classic controller pro with tweaked button layout. That's all it is. And it's great. Felt good in the hands, except for reaching the Y button, because your right hand, you're using the joystick, the joystick's at the top, and you got to reach down to the Y button, and it's not exactly the closest. Y's reload, so it kind of becomes an issue. But it wasn't too much of an issue. So when you play in this multiplayer, two people in one system, one person the pro controller, one person with a gamepad. The pro controller, you're a survivor, you run around, first of four flags, you win, you just blow up zombies. Kill them, shoot them. Done! The next person, he plays on a gamepad exclusively. He uses that kind of like RTS, you put the zombies, different types of zombies, like zombies that take flags, zombies that chase, zombies that stand guard. Put zombies on there, there's limits about... You have to have so many units, life units, to place a zombie, and you can only have so many zombies on the field at once. That's how it works. And um, I loved it. I, I won both times, and it was really great. No performance issue at all. This is why I think that what the previous single-player one wasn't set up properly, because this one worked amazingly. So. Yay, Wii U. I didn't really get anything. There was a water bottle. It said DC and the Wii U experience. And then I got a mushroom. Like, they gave you a mushroom candy on the stick. It's from, like, New York. Basically, it's a... They actually have a marshmallow for the base of the mushroom. And the head is chocolate. Like a chocolate cupcake thing with icing over top of it. It was good. But I didn't get any swag. Sorry. Um, I want to briefly touch on this quickly. Payday, the DLC is out in Europe. Should be coming out to the U.S. soon, which is a good thing. It's a great thing that many people didn't really play it. Um, I, of course, I'm talking about the PS3 version, because I, I prefer gaming on consoles and computers. But anyways, the good thing about this game that everybody should try is that, like, for the PS3, the demo, you don't need to buy it to play the whole game. Like, if you have a demo and you're playing with somebody who's hosting has the original game, you can play on the other levels. And if you play with somebody who has a DLC and you don't have the DLC, as long as they're hosting, they have the DLC, you can play it. So, awesome. There's also going to be, if UK is anything to compare to, there's going to be a bundle of the game and DLC. DLC comes with two more heists, bringing the total to, what, eight? And a couple more weapons and abilities, but it's a sweet bank heist game. More people need to play it. Speaking of more people need to play it, Resident Evil Ra Operation Raccoon City got a bad name by what I can assume are people who did not even play. I mean, I can understand if they if you play the game single player, you might not like it because it's mainly a multiplayer focused game. But it's functional, it never was broken, completely works. They have this awesome gunslinger mode, which I'm not going to tell you, you have to play to figure out. But like more third um, third person shooter games need to adopt this gunslinger mode. It's really awesome. Nobody plays it. They even gave everybody free DLC, and then there was two additional DLC packs again. So, and these are not like, oh, here's some more maps that you can play DLC. These are like new story missions. Like, I don't know, I think one of them has new levels, but, like, you play as different characters, and there's different cinemas and different stories and different objectives, so it's, like, new levels. 
And everybody should have picked it up when it was $15 for the limited edition, which gives... I mean, the only thing really limited is you get patches, a steel book, and some new gun, some guns, and outfit colors. But still, 15 bucks for a game. It's fun. Multiplayer is great. And it's so cool to be in that environment and running around killing zombies. Everybody hates the controls in Resident Evil. And yet, here's a game that presents the controls and a really. Pretty much the way that you expect it. I mean, granted, the cover. Like, oh, you don't have to use cover. No, I mean, granted, it's a little bit easier when you're fighting other soldiers, but a lot of times you're running around firing creatures and you just run around with a gun. But, uh, but it, you just run around and shoot. You have the freedom of movement that people want in a Resident Evil game, and yet they just wrote this off. I mean, you get to go through the Resident Evil 2 Raccoon Police Department. Not the whole thing, but you go through memorable parts, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is this place. And sure, it's a, a split-off canon where you attempt to kill Leon or whatever, but okay. A lot of people out there in the games are into comic books. You know how many different timelines they have? And that's okay, but Ra Re Resident Evil can't have their own timeline. They can't have multiple timelines. And this is just a one-off Hey, would it be cool if we ran around in Raccoon City with all the zombies, which everybody wants. Everybody's like, oh, I want a Raccoon City game. They give you it, and you complain. Last thing, the multiplayer. There are zombies, hunters, tyrants running around in multiplayer. And you're finding other people in, in Raccoon City. What, what's wrong with that? What's your beef? Because I, I'm so passionate about this, uh, a friend actually asked me, like, you should do reviews. I'm like, I don't know. I don't think I'm good at reviews. Should I do reviews? Plus, I mean, what am I going to do? A video review? Or write it on my Tumblr? Tumblr. Tumblr. Tumble, 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 chameleon. I asked, like, what should I eat or whatever. But Awesome Badger was cool. Asked me real questions. Like the first one, who would win in a fight between Kratos and War? War from Darksiders, which I'm excited for Darksiders 2, even though it's not involving War and it's not even the same type of game. I like loot war games, so I'm good. Who would win in a fight? Um, it's got to be War, because first off, War is kind of like essentially immortal. I guess you could say Kratos is too, but even though he, spoiler, kills himself, and of course he comes back, you know he will. Um, Kratos still has the origins of a god, I mean a mortal, so he probably won't survive, but I mean, war is just like, I'm a god, or not a god, he's uh, Nef Nephism. Nephilia, something like that. He's like this ancient race that's pretty much immortal. And, by the way, War is not human size. He's like twice as big as humans. And he's not slow. And he has a gigantic sword. I don't think Kratos would really stand a chance. Of course, after saying that, I realized that Kratos did go against up against Titans. Even though, how can a little titan, like, oh, I can't hit you because I'm going so slow. I still have faith in war. I just feel that he's a stronger force. He can do it. Yeah. He had another question. Um, he asked, let's see, what does it say? Um, how do you feel about, uh, what's that name? I, I can't, I can't quite read it. How... How do you feel about um, Dead Space 3? That's a um, very interesting question. How do I feel? It's so... You know, it's Dead Space 3. It has, it's come a long way since Dead Space 1. And there's just so much to think about. and It's going to be freaking awesome. It's going to be... Great. Multiple locations besides just the snow level. There's multiple locations, including a space, but space area. So we got that. 
And then you got the whole main thing. So if you wanna, if you wanna quickly run through with a buddy and like, just go through like maybe somebody who's not bi as big into the horror. Or I guess more of a, a Call of Duty person. Like, oh, I just like shooting things or whatever. You could go co-op with him, running through this level. I mean, they have the whole banter between Carver and Isaac, which is exclusive to co-oping. But you could run through the whole thing, and it's cool action-packed buddy thing. Or you can do the single player where you're by yourself, darkness, in your room, cranked up audio, home surround sound, hopefully, and go in these different paths to explore more of the story and get freaked out and just get and all these like things popping out, creatures and things trying to kill you. And like, oh my gosh, don't kill me! And then you're like with your guns, and the guns are going to be. Yes. The guns. I, I don't see what the beef is. They're not forcing you to do a co-op. That's the number one thing. You're not forced to do it. Adds a little bit of banter, maybe a little bit more personality to the game. Um, instead of having just a silent protagonist, you have a little bit more speech driven. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if. Carver, if there's some more additional dialogue that explains some of the story, like the whole Ellie Carver thing, obviously that's going to be a hot topic between them two. Um, but it, it, I don't see it as a bad thing. I mean, I know it's... I, I kind of like the whole idea what they're doing. It's like, you can play the game straight through, but then the whole separate branching paths, it kind of reminds me of the original Dead Space, because the Dead Space, each level was an area. I mean, granted, it's one single path, but, like, it felt like you could branch off in different directions. So, it kind of feels like it would be kind of um, a callback to that. Which, how can that be bad? The new snowsuit looks awesome. I don't know if they're going to change it, but from what I heard, that if you do these side quests... Not only would you get more story and the horror that you crave, you will also get additions, I should say, I guess. Um, it was I first heard that it was if you do enough of these side things, then as soon as you get to the snow planet, you get the snowsuit. So it's kind of like if you do enough of A, you get B. Kind of like if you do such and such in Sympathy of the Night, is that the name of the Castlevania game? Then you get the plus mission. And pretty much all the Castlevanias did that after that one. But, like, if you go here and you fight on this equipment, then you go... Well, if you go to these locations, then you get... At least that's how I first heard it. It could have changed. Who knows? But I'm I'm excited for it. I hope... I've kept on bugging um, Dead Space Twitter. Beep. Dead Space Twitter. Um, that they need to make a collector's edition, or, as I said, the marker edition. Because, you know, this is all about the marker. And the marker is going to be more explored in this one. So why not? Marker edition seems perfect. But I'm, I'm very excited. Um, yeah. I have all the Dead Space games. Even the mobile one. I don't regret having Extraction. Ignition was free. But yeah, um, that's Dead Space 3. Yay. Dead Space. As you saw before, I have a carver I have too. Okay, so, um, awesome badger. I'll, I'll probably do something. Maybe I'll send you something because those are pretty good. Those are good questions. I like those questions. I didn't ask for questions. I got the questions. Want more questions? If whoever gets the best question next week, Nintendo pouch. I'll send you Nintendo pouch. I mean, I don't know if anybody wants this thing. I might just take it to work. We're like, ooh, thank you, Mario. But, um, uh, yeah, if, if, you have, if you have good questions, then, uh, I'll pick somebody's question to get the Mario patch, and I'll send it to you. And if you recall, I did tweet the person who I sent the other two stuff to. This week will be this thing. Next week, I'll be probably giving away a Dragon's Dogma poster. Um, it's the one from San Diego Comic-Con. Not this year, last year. Ooh, last nugget. Keep your eye out for that. Sorry for another long episode. It's got ranty. And I feel like I'm missing a topic I want to talk about. But anyways, 
you have your homework. Give me those questions. Do you want this? I'll give it to you. Do you want it? 